Manifesto of Federal Socialist Party, Nepal, FSP, Nepal. 1. Introduction Nepali society is a multi-ethnic, multilingual, multicultural, multi-religious society with geographical diversity. The solidarity among these varied castes and ethnic groups and linguistic families is indeed the national unity of Nepal. However, as the expansion of Gorkha Empire began in 1768, 1825 BS, the state started to ignore and suppress the diversity of nation. In the Rana regime, it achieved legal recognition. Though Nepali society is diverse, the state assumed one caste, one language, one religion and monocultural character. This state of mind has descended from the kings and ranas to the leadership of current political parties. This has led to not only ethnic inequality but also a crisis of existence. Therefore, after the peaceful revolution of 2006, all the downtrodden communities of Nepal raised the demand of identity-based federalism as a ground for salvation. These demands of disadvantaged communities should have been addressed through the historic constituent assembly. However, the major political parties of Nepal, Nepali Congress and Unified Communist Party of Nepal, Marxist-Leninist in particular, stooped to the level of not promulgating the constitution in order to suppress the aspirations of people. They chose the path of dissolution of constituent assembly whereas the Unified Communist Party of Nepal, Maoist, remain indecisive. Even though Mahdi's based parties too could not strongly sustain in their stands. The parties should have accepted their failure and asked apology from the Nepali people. Rather, instead of self-criticism, they are bragging before the Nepali populace as if they have emerged as winners. Hence, these traditional, undemocratic and status quo parties cannot meet the necessity of Nepali people towards change. Assimilating this very same phenomenon, we are now in the process of building a new power. Respected people, Nepal witnesses several political changes. In each of these changes, the Nepali people have rendered their role in the front line of struggle. However, the political parties posing as the leaders of people could not institutionalize these achievements. In the armed struggle of 1950 against Rana regime, the people took to streets displaying huge power. The gallant fight of the then political parties and ex-servicemen took the armed struggle to a decisive phase. Due to this, the then Rana rulers were compelled to declare the holding of constituent assembly elections in Nepal. However, that declaration did not see the light of day. However, the Royal Declaration of 1st February 1958 called for the holding of parliamentary elections instead. The Nepali people continued with their incessant struggle for the holding of constituent assembly elections. After six decades of struggle and countless sacrifices, the Nepali folk emerged victorious on 24 May 2006. The people's rights returned to their hands. This time though the elections for constituent assembly were held, the constituent assembly was crippled to the level that it could not produce the constitution. The aspirations of Nepali folk to welcome constitution drafted from a constituent assembly suffered another jolt on 27 June 2012. Due to the narrow-mindedness of major political parties of Nepal regarding the restructuring of state, the constituent assembly got dissolved without attaining its stated objective. This is very sad and serious event in Nepali history. Major reasons behind such debacle are the prevalence of status quo mentality in the major political parties, their inability to assimilate the people's aspirations for change, denial of the Nepali people's wishes for identity-based federalism and constitution with federalism, their encouragement of anti-federalist regression is in the name of indivisible regions and districts, prevalence of arrogance of so-called higher caste in the party leadership and denial of the right of sovereign constituent assembly to provide the right of decision. This clarifies that the political forces of Nepal have bitterly failed in their mission of resolving the political crisis and to promulgate constitution through the constituent assembly by exercising the sovereignty inherent in the public. Therefore, in order to materialize the wishes and desires of the agents of change, the Nepali people, Nepal now needs a new alternative political force. Feeling this need, 
We have constituted the Federal Socialist Party. We have not established this party for party's sake. Since the present political leadership has failed miserably to resolve the political crisis faced by the nation, we have built a new power in order to meet the national essentialities. 2. Why a new force is needed? In brief, the reasons behind the need for a new force are as follows. 1. Nepali society has been a pluralistic society. Here, different human communities have been residing in specific places in a concentrated manner. In history there were big and small principalities which were about to develop as national states. However, following the state expansion of 1825 BS, instead of acquiring their partnership, efforts were made to eradicate their existence and to create a single national state by forcefully amalgamating them. The minority, marginalized and the endangered communities were subject to exclusion. The Madash movement which supplemented the earlier revolution and the agitation of indigenous and ethnic people such as Tarus have resonated the commitment towards transforming Nepal into an identity-based federal state grounded on ethnic, linguistic, cultural and regional autonomy from its centralized and unitary composition. Commitment was also expressed to implement the right of self-determination as per the UN policy and the ILO Convention 169. These shall compulsorily transform Nepal into a pluralistic national state. A new force is needed to address the aspirations of change sounded by Nepali people. 2. The Nepali society is plagued by hunger, disease, poverty, economic inequality and class discrimination. Socialism is the only way to liberate people from these maladies. The peaceful people's revolution of 2006 has uprooted monarchy, which was standing as a symbol of feudalism for a long time. In that revolution characterized as a record-making revolution of the world as well, the Nepali people have emerged victorious in their battle against monarchy. The increasing influence of capitalism in the socio-economic system of Nepal is further aggravated by the collapse of monarchy. This marked the entry of country into capitalism. However, even capitalism cannot eradicate the economic inequality and class discrimination prevalent in Nepal. Therefore, a new force is required to establish socialism in the country. 3. The nationality of Nepal has flourished from the sacrificial struggles of thousands of gallant warriors. However, the political parties here have been making this a matter of bargaining for power politics. Indeed, two important factors have to be credited for the consolidation of nationality. Firstly, solidarity among the indigenous, ethnic people, Khas community, Madhashi, Belites, Muslims and all of the castes and tribes of Nepal as well as linguistic families. Second one is freedom from external intervention. Only when these two aspects are moved together, shall the nationality of Nepal be reinforced. Hence, establishment of a new force is required in Nepal so as to caution the political parties, which have been bargaining on the issue of nationality. 4. Republicanism is the culmination of democracy. The independence, equality and fraternity of people are practiced to the optimum level only in democracy. However, Republican Nepal is still far from being institutionalized. Even now, regressive forces are bent on restoring monarchy in Nepal. This is indicated by the frequent references to restore the constitution of 1990. Therefore, in order to institutionalize republic state apparatus in Nepal and to supremely develop democracy herein, a new force is needed. 5. The norm of traditional democracy comprising of a majority government and minority opposition has failed miserably. In Nepal, majority tends to be arbitrary and destructive. This signifies that in a pluralistic country like Nepal, the form of democracy should be inclusive. Therefore, in order to move Nepal to the direction of inclusive democracy, provision of clear mechanisms in the constitution itself is necessary. The nation shall experience stability only when application of proportional representation in Nepali elections, party level and community level representation on its basis and putting to practice the model of inclusive democracy is realized in true sense. 
even to advance honest effort to this end, a new power is needed in the Paul. 6. Secularism is an important notion of democracy. Every citizen should have a right to observe a religion or not. The state should not err by recognizing any one of the religions as a state religion. The state should be secular in true sense. Likewise, the linguistic policy of state shall also have to be multilingual. All the citizens of countries shall have to be oriented towards learning generally three languages, viz. Any two languages of inside the country and one additional international language to enhance competitive capacity in international forum. Guarantee of education in mother tongue also has to be guaranteed. The federal government should allow the expression of diversity in country embedded in a cultural form. This shall evoke a feeling of all citizens are equal inside the country. For this also, there is a necessity of building a new force in Nepal. 7. People of all castes, languages, religions and cultures have been residing in coexistence in Nepal for a long time. The base of national unity here is the coexistence and social bonhomie of all the castes. However, the social structure of Nepal could not be represented in the political parties of Nepal. Even in the so-called major parties of Nepal, leadership and dominance of a single caste group can be seen. Thus, the same parties hindered in restructuring the state apparatus from the erstwhile single caste dominated regime being practiced right from the feudal state expansion process. Upon pronouncing identity based federalism, we want ethnic partnership and not ethnic states. Since the current political parties have failed miserably in achieving this end, a new force is warranted to enhance national unity, coexistence of all castes, and social harmony. 8. Nepal has witnessed armed rebellions from time to time. The armed struggles of 2007 BS, 2028 BS and the 10-year armed rebellion of 2052 BS are some of the instances. However, in all the game-changing events of Nepal, the course taken by peaceful movements alone has become powerful. Still, even now, armed groups are existent in Nepal. In order to establish a sustainable peace in Nepal, we have to eliminate the grounds of conflict first. Sustainable peace cannot be achieved until all the forms of human-to-human -human exploitation are eliminated. Therefore, in order to establish the notion that the course of peaceful people's movement is only the chief course of change in Nepal, a new force is required. 9. In order to take Nepal in the direction of social justice, good governance and economic prosperity, it is expedient to effectuate socio-economic transformation as per the spirit of peaceful people's revolution of 2006. For this to happen, productivity of state needs to be enhanced. However, in Nepal, the state resorted to community exclusion policy even in the fiscal sector. Efforts were made to concentrate the means and resources of Nepal within the specific cost community. People's prosperity is achieved only through the establishment of a state mechanism which can confer all the fundamental rights such as right to food, clothing, shelter, education, health, employment and the like. The capacity and willpower to transform this country into a prosperous socialist nation of the 21st century among the current political parties is very weak. Therefore, to meet the expectations of Nepali people towards social justice, good governance and economic prosperity also, a new power is needed. 10. The notion of people making their own constitution for themselves in order to establish their sovereignty is the most democratic principle. However, this expectation of people could not become successful due to the betrayal of major political parties towards the nation and its subjects. We should be prepared to launch an utmost difficult struggle so as to secure the achievements gained by six decade long struggle of people. The status quo forces of Nepal are again engaged in deceptive ploys of holding parliamentary elections as in 2007 BS to seize these rights. The Nepali Congress and Unified Communist Party of Nepal, Marxist-Leninists, are fomenting this situation. Therefore, in order to take the battle between the status quo forces and change-making forces to a decisive point in this period of transformation of Nepali society, 
and to draft constitution through constitutional assembly, all the change-making forces have to be brought under one roof. To serve this end also, building of a new force is expedient. 3. Federalist Socialism The Path of Nepali Society Transformation there are several models of federalism and socialism in the world. Though the socialist models of 19th and 20th century greatly challenged capitalism, they have failed to make the supremacy of socialism unchallengeable. The socialism of 21st century needs to brace for this challenge. The socialist movement of Nepal cannot be successful by emulating other countries. Its own peculiar course is needed for this. Our unique path is the socialism rested on federal system of governance. We have construed federalism as a representative case of freedom from discrimination and socialism as the ideological root in this connection. While looking at experiences of the world, the capitalist federalism has failed to simultaneously solve the ethnic and class-based issues. Hence, we have stood firmly for socialist federalism. Nepal needs identity-based federalism rather than administrative of geographical federalism. The Nepali socialism shall also rest on the socio-economic foundation of Nepal. In present era, the socialism of Nepal shall be based on several forms of public, communal and mixed ownership over the means of production. Under this, a mixed fiscal policy comprising of state, cooperatives and private ownership and public-private partnership shall be accentuated. The traditional communal ownership system unique to Nepal shall be managed in line with the federalist socialism. The increase of productivity of state and its judicial distribution shall be made effective in the federal socialism. The federal socialism is an amalgamation of the Nepalese movements directed towards national sovereignty, federal democracy and social change. In order to achieve this end, the ideological and organizational as well as publicity functions shall be intensified and popular movements shall be developed. This shall aid in promoting a pluralistic national state rested on identity-based federalism as a foundation of national unity. This is not a capitalist democratic system, rather it shall be a socialist democratic regime. In course of inception of social revolution and evolution, this shall further prosper. Generally, the following will be the salient features of federal socialism. 1. Supremacy of people. 2. Federal governance. 3. Open and pluralistic society. 4. Constitutional and lawful state. 5. Separation of power. 6. Fundamental and human rights. 7 adult franchise and periodic elections 8 competitive multi-party system and proportional elections 9 democratization of state apparatus and parties 10 socialist eco-political direction 11 right of self-determination 12 welfare state 13 proportional inclusion 14 Cooperative government. 15. Parallel legislature. 16. Independent judiciary. 17. Secularism and cultural multiplicity. 18. Residue powers. 19. Role of working class in politics. 20. Referendum. And 21. Balanced foreign relations. 4. Let's group under the new power for change. The peaceful people's revolution of 2006 has ushered in federal democratic republic by overthrowing the feudal monarchy that had been for a long time. This change is epoch making in the life of our nation. Though this event has introduced Nepal into the capitalist age, it cannot eradicate feudalism, commissionism and monopolistic capitalism which remain as the main obstacles in the advancement of Nepali folk. This revolution has certainly weakened the bases of those culprits but still has not eliminated them. Hence, in order to terminate the social and economic foundations of the feudalism, commissionism and monopolistic capitalism and to guide the country towards socialism shall be our historical mandate.
Only then can we be able to found federal socialism in our nation. So, we proudly declare the opening of a new force so as to actively advance towards the building of a political power which shall stand firmly for federalism, republicanism and secularism, carry class liberation and social justice in a balanced manner, always secure the national solidarity, social goodwill and coexistence, proceed towards peace, prosperity and socialism and which shall work by keeping the working class and oppressed communities at center stage. The goal of this party shall be the formation of an independent, sovereign, inclusive, judicious, non-discriminatory, equitable, secular, prosperous federal socialist republic of Nepal. This party aims to free Nepal of all the discriminations pertaining to politics, economy, society, culture, languages, religions, gender, region and the like. We have stringed up these goals and have floated the motto of federalism for ethnic liberation and socialism for class liberation. By incorporating these twin important issues, we have proposed federal socialism as the guiding principle of Nepali revolution. The first has carried the essence of identity-based federalism while the latter has embodied the essence of social justice and formation of an equitable society. Therefore, we invite you to unite under this new political power to rid of all forms of discrimination prevailing in our country. Let's include ourselves, who aspire for class liberation, in this new force so as to break all chains of exploitation. Let's group ourselves, who have been subject to caste-based, linguistic, religious and cultural discrimination, in the new force so as to emancipate ourselves from all these inequities. We also urge the downtrodden communities suffering from regional inequality to include themselves in this new power. Further, we also appeal those who have been subject to patriarchy since centuries to join in this new power for gender equality. Long live the federal socialism. Long live the federal socialist party, Nepal.